One of the most important things you can do to increase your closing percentage and make it very, very, very easy to get people to hire you and to show them that value is get more social proof, is get more reviews. Perceived likelihood of achieving a outcome is one of the absolute most important things that you can do to increase that value. If I say I can get you this outcome, but you don't actually believe that I can get it, what are the odds that you're gonna pay, for, pay me for that outcome? Not very high, right? But if I say, look, I can, I can deliver this outcome, and here's 300 other people that I've already delivered the outcome for, who in their words will tell you exactly how we help them achieve that outcome, how their lives have improved, and how you know this was the best experience they've ever had, you're much more likely to hire, hire me for that outcome, right? So I want you guys to write this down. And this is something that is very, very important. It's something that a lot of people don't realize, but let me do this so I don't lose my room key here. Um, all right, I want you to write this down. This is a, a, a very, very important takeaway and it's something you guys need to look at. All right, I want you to write down reviews equal, I'm gonna draw this, money. Reviews equal money. Because there is a direct correlation with how many reviews you have, how much social proof you have, and how much money you make. There was a program that I used to put out called the Social Media Marketing for Lawyers Masterclass. Is anyone in the social media marketing? I know Brent was in it, I know Shauna was in it. Who else was in it? Was anyone else in the social media? Okay, yeah, Mike was in it. Um, when that program launched, it was $997. The last time I sold that program, it was $50,000. It was basically the same program. What was different? The difference was that when I started, my social proof was here. And when it ended, the social proof that I got out of that, where basically I could tell people, listen, if you go through this program, if you implement what we say, if you go through the steps and you actually execute, you will make seven figures. You will make a million dollars. You will make a ridiculous amount of money. And as a result, because the perceived, likelihood, the perceived likelihood of achieving that result was, was higher, the value, was, the value went up, right? And when the value goes up, what does that mean I can do with my prices? Anybody? I can raise my prices, exactly. So that's how I took that program from 997 to $50,000 right? And the reason why was because of social proof. And this is something that you guys can do with your firms as well. I talk to lawyers all the time and they say, I don't have a huge budget. I don't know exactly what I should do to, to, to market myself, to grow my law firm. And I say, well, look, first of all, that's kind of in your head anyway. But if you actually didn't have any money, the number one thing I would focus on is getting more reviews because reviews equal money. So uh, 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 Bizarre Voice Network did this study. And I, I've, some of you probably know this already, but um, they found that when a business, any type of business, doesn't matter the industry, when they get 200 reviews, how many reviews? 200 reviews, their revenue increases by 44%. 200 reviews equals a 44% increase in revenue. Oops. And this is super important. 200, that's weird. 44%. I want you to write that number down. What is 44% of your revenue? Would anyone here love to just have a, just an instant way to increase your revenue by 44%? All right, who here has gotten, Charmaine definitely does. Who here has gotten a lot of reviews? Somebody put your hand if you've gotten a lot of reviews recently. John, oh yeah, let's get John the microphone real quick. Long story short, I had 172 Google five-star reviews mm -hmm. and I lost them all. Oh, wow. And I went to Wait a second, hold on, hold on a second. How did that impact your firm losing all those reviews? I, my phone stopped. Okay. I went from 275 calls to no calls. Wow. Total freak out. Yeah. And I learned because my IT person erased my Google business profile Gmail account when we switched Ooh. to Microsoft 365. Yeah. That they all go. Oh, wow. So I wrote a heartfelt letter to every single person who wrote a review. Yeah. And I asked them to go in and tweak their review mm -hmm. so it would show up. Mm. And in a month and a half, I went from zero reviews to 69 reviews, which okay. I today. Yeah. And I went, I was disappeared from the Google three pack. Mm -hmm. I disappeared from Google. My phone stopped, totally freaked out. I'm back at the Google three pack. Yeah. I'm showing up in every search again. 
and my phone is back to ringing. It's and let me ask you this. When people come in your office, what percentage of them mention your reviews? Every one of them. Every one of them. Does anyone else have that experience that has a lot of reviews? All right, again, if you don't have a lot of reviews, look around. Keep your hands up really high, really high. All right. Success leaves clues, guys. Thank you, John. Everybody, round of applause for John. So that's crazy. I, didn't, I, I haven't even heard that story. I, I'm, thanks for sharing that. Now, the question is, who do you ask for a review? So a lot of times we think we can only ask clients for reviews when we settle their case or when we finish their case or, or when the case is over, right? But that is not true. Is there anyone here who asks clients for reviews before the case is settled or over? All right, cool. All right, now raise your hands if you wait till the end, if you currently, the, that's the only time you do it. All right, awesome. So that's great news because that means that there are so many opportunities for everybody that just raised their hand to get more reviews that you, you're probably not even thinking about, right? You don't have to wait until a case is finished to ask for a review. The second you deliver value to a client, you can ask them for a review and then you can always have them update the review later, right? But you have to get into the habit of asking for reviews frequently because most of the time people are not going to leave reviews right when you initially ask them to, right? So anytime a client you give any value whatsoever, make sure that you're li leaving them a review. And it doesn't even have to necessarily be about, you know, can you leave me a review about this amazing outcome that we got on the case? The case is still going. Can you, you know, you can ask them for a review that just talks about what it's like working with your firm, about what your responsiveness is like, what's your professionalism, all those things about how a lot of times you guys get small wins for clients along the way towards getting the big win, am I right? So if that's the case, then have them leave reviews about those small wins because they all add up and they all count. And a lot of times a small win for a client will put them in a really good, uh, a really good uh, situation. You had a question? I've been most successful getting reviews asking before they're even a client. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Im immediately at the end of the first five to 10 minute phone call. Yeah, exactly. Most successful time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's on my list. Consults. Who here asks for consultations, people who do consultations or even do a phone call with them that's not even a consultation? Who asks for reviews? Put your hands up high. All right. Who does not do that right now? Put your hands up high. All right. So that's another thing you guys can do. Anytime you are on the phone with somebody or a consultation and you deliver value to them, because who here delivers value in your consultation? Like you don't just go in and just sell, right? You find out about their case, you find about the situation, you give them advice, you tell them, well, if I was you, here's what I would probably do. Here's some of the weaknesses that I see on the other side. Here's something like you give them lots of value, right? And one of the things you can do is as soon as that's over, even if they don't hire you or if they do hire you, you can say, hey, listen, if um, I sent you a link, would you mind leaving us a quick review just just because we want to know that when people have questions or concerns they can call our firm and we're going to help them get answers to the problems even if they don't hire us would you guys mind would you mind doing that and most of the time people are going to say yes very few people are going to say no but you don't have to worry about those people and then you send them a link and a decent percentage of them will actually do it especially if you provided value because of that reciprocity because you gave them value without actually charging them at the at the beginning i mean if they do hire you you're still going to give them value but consults are a great place to get them um past clients who has past clients that have not left reviews yet anybody all right those are your prime targets if you have a past client that left you a uh, a testimony or that sorry that you got a result for it and they didn't leave a review we need to go back and we need to get them to get us reviews um friends and family Friends and family, have, have your friends and family left you character reviews? Now, a character review is a review that talks about your character. I left a review for a, a character review for Sammy the other night. And basically, I didn't say Sammy represented me and did a great job because that wouldn't be true. But what I did say is I said, I know Sammy very well. I know that he's very reputable. I know he's knowledgeable. I know he cares about his clients and I know that he'll fight tooth and nail for them. So if I needed an attorney like him, Sammy would be the first person I would call, right? You can get friends and family members to write reviews like that, that talk about your character. And it all goes on there. It doesn't say, it doesn't say client reviews on Google, right? <laughs> you can get people to do that. Um, another one is uh, vendors. Who here has vendors that you spend $500 or more with on a regular basis? 
Okay, ask every single one of them to give you a review. These are easy sources of reviews. There's lots of different types of reviews and lots of different types of testimonials that you can get. So the easiest is gonna be the text review. And the text review is basically a Google review. That's where they're actually typing the review out. Now, um, has anyone here had an issue where somebody goes to Google, leaves a review, and it disappears or doesn't get posted? Okay, cool. So um, that has been an issue, and the reason why is because reviews actually increase your Google rankings. Does everybody know that, that reviews actually impact where you rank in Google? Okay, so Google uses relevancy. How relevant are you to the thing that the person is searching for and also the geographical location to where the person is located. And they use that information to determine where you rank in Google in the Google Maps. Where they get relevancy from is from reviews. So if you have reviews that use words, phrases, keywords, and synonyms that are all related to both your practice area and also your geographical location, and you have lots of them, then what's gonna happen is Google is going to rank you higher in the Google three pack. Now the problem is, is that marketers ruin everything. And once they realized that, marketers started just buying tons and tons and tons of fake Google reviews with words, phrases, keywords, and synonyms related to whatever customers, um, you know, uh, what, whatever people were searching for for their customers. So. Google had to crank the filter up really high. But here's something else that's cool. We had a client, I don't remember who it was, if you're in this room, uh, I wish I could remember who said this, but they actually contacted Google and got a bunch of reviews that had been filtered and removed, they got Google to put them back in. Now you used to be able to do this pre-pandemic, but after the pandemic hit, you know how all the companies basically said, oh, we don't need customer service anymore. Um, Google did that as well. And Google stopped allowing you to contact them, but apparently now you can contact them again. So if you have reviews that have gotten taken down, it's worth going to support.google.com slash business and scroll down to the bottom, you're gonna see it says contact us. And you can actually contact them and you can try to get them to release those reviews that have been filtered. Now, I don't know if it's gonna work, but I've talked to clients and I know that recently, this, this is like back, it, it was gone for a couple of years. Um, so if you do that, but you have to remember, what is Google looking for? They want reviews that are actually from real people. They don't want spam reviews, which is the reason that reviews don't get posted in the first place, right? So one of the best ways to make sure that your reviews actually get posted is by making sure that the reviews seem real, that they seem authentic. The secret to getting lots of reviews, as I said, is having a plan. I want you guys to think about this right now. I want you to think about this. Who in your law firm can you incentivize to own getting reviews for your law firm? Like who, who, who is gonna be in charge of getting reviews for your firm? And how can you incentivize them? Now, this is why this 44% this number is so important. Remember I said once you hit 200 reviews, your law firm revenue increases by 44%. If you figure out what 44% is, divide that number by 200, that's how much each review is worth for your law firm, right? So. If you have somebody that you can bonus them $100, $50, $75, something for every review that they get, every five-star review that they get, first of all, what that is, that's an investment in your law firm that's gonna make a huge difference on the bottom line. Second, it's gonna give a morale boost to an employee or employees because they can now increase their pay and also contribute to the overall growth of the law firm. So everybody wins in this, right? But the question is, and I want you guys to write this down right now, who is going to be in charge of getting reviews for your law firm? The who doesn't have to be just one person, but the question is how can I incentivize them? How can I make them excited? Write down the word excited, not just how can I make them do it. How can I make them excited to do it? Where they're like, holy crap, we're gonna get to go to Cancun? Yeah, I'm in, I'm, I'm asking everybody to leave a review, right? How can we do that, right? Now, the other thing you have to remember is that if you, ask 10 people to leave a review, seven of them will not do it. The success rate's gonna be about 30%. So you have two options. You can ask more people for reviews or you can follow up and follow up and follow up with people just like sales, right? Just like you have to, just like you have to follow up on sales, you need to follow up on people who you asked to leave a review, who said they would leave a review and didn't do it.
right? And that's why it's important to have somebody who owns the process because a lot of times people want to leave a review. They say they'll leave a review and then they get home and the kids are screaming and dinner's going and they got to go to soccer practice and all this stuff and they just forget about it. It's not a priority, right? So you have to have somebody on your team that is in charge of the reviews and also is following up with people, right? Um, I talked to John Fisher, who's a personal injury attorney, and in one year he got 300 some odd reviews, which is amazing. Who would love to have 300 reviews next year? Give me your hands up. Okay, so I asked him, well, how, how, did, how did you do this? And he said, well, I sent out 1,500 requests, right? <laughs> so like, so uh, he sent out 1,500 requests and he got 300 reviews. So the outcome was still great, but holy crap, that's a lot of requests. So you have to do things and you have to remember that most people won't. Most people won't leave you a review. So you've gotta have somebody that's in charge of it that stays on it and it can't be an every once in a while thing. It's gotta be something that you're doing over and over and over and over and over again. Now, here's the other question. The other question is how many Google reviews do you need? Does anybody know? <laughs> well, the answer is more. The correct answer is more. Um, but one thing, you, here's a good starting point. Go to Google and um, you wanna Google search your most important keywords that you wanna appear for. So maybe it's personal injury attorney, maybe it's criminal defense attorney, maybe it's family law attorney. And you wanna look and you wanna see how many reviews do the other law firms that are ranking in the Google three pack have? Who has the most number of reviews? Maybe it's 50 reviews and 75 reviews. You need more reviews than the number one firm in your area. Okay, so, um, and, and we know this, we actually proved this a couple of years ago. I wrote about this in my book, Five Star Attorney, um, where we, have, we had a client, they were a bankruptcy law firm in Chicago, and they were in the Google three pack for every possible keyword that you could imagine for bankruptcy. You know, chapter 13, chapter 11, chapter seven, uh, foreclosure avoidance, like every single possible keyword that you could that you could dream of to be in for bankruptcy in Chicago they were in but they didn't get a ton of phone calls so I looked at their Google I looked at their their, their three pack and they had five Google reviews the other two law firms that were in the three pack one of them had 10 reviews and one of them had 15 reviews so they were actually in third place in terms of quantity of reviews so I said hey can we can we try something can you get 20 reviews and let's see what happens so that would make them go from five reviews to 25 reviews, and it would give them the most number of reviews in the three pack. So they said, yeah, we can do that. And I didn't actually believe they would do it, but they actually went out, they got 20 reviews. So they had 25 reviews. So now they had 25 reviews. The second place firm had 15 reviews and the third place firm now had 10 reviews. The next week was the busiest week in the history of their law firm. And the reason why is because if somebody knew who you were, they would search for you by name, but they don't know who you are. So they search personal injury attorney or criminal defense attorney or estate planning attorney or family law attorney or whatever you are, right? So then what they're brought back with is a list of law firms. And they still don't know who any of these people are because if they knew who they were, they would have just called them. So now they look at the social proof. And most law firms have anywhere from a 4.5 to a 4.9 law to, uh, social proof. But as long as you've got four and a half shaded stars, there's no differentiator there. So now the next thing they look at is the quantity of reviews. If one firm has 200 reviews and another has five and another one has 27, they're gonna go with the one with the most reviews. And we've proven this over and over and over again. So that's why it's important. That's why you must have the most reviews in the Google three pack. And then you can't be complacent. You have to keep going because your competitors will come after you once they see that you have more reviews than them. They just will. So it's gotta be the type of thing where you are always, always, always getting a review. So the day that you retire is the day you can stop asking for Google reviews. Um, Last thing is, and, and then here's the thing you need, to, you need to think about. Like I said, it's 33% is, your, is your, your, your success rate, which you can expect. So what you need to do is you need to look at how many Google reviews do you need? So it's the equation there. All right, so let's say you need 50 Google reviews. Let's say you need 50 Google reviews to be number one in the three pack, right? You're gonna divide that number by 0.33. And that's like 151 requests. So if you need 50, if you need 50, 
divide whatever the number is that you need, divide it by 0.33. That's how many requests you need to send out. And that should be your goal over the next couple months or whatever. Social proof and reviews will change your law firm. It will change your life. It will change the finances of your law firm. It will change everything. The only thing you have to do is just make sure that you're on it.